Hey guys and welcome back. So behind me is a building that's very special to me. Uh, back in the 80s my parents owned a small trucking company and this building behind me is where we did all the maintenance, all the light maintenance I should say on all the big rigs. And uh, I consider myself very blessed to grow up this way because uh, I kind of got a, a, a real world view uh, about the industry at a very young age. And I was the parts guy for the business, uh, at least for a little while. Um, my job was to make sure that the shelves were stocked of the items that we needed. Uh, my job was to make sure things were organized in a way that my father, who was doing all the work, uh, would actually have what he needed when he needed it. So I kind of got an appreciation for that. So I want to talk a little bit about the parts room in the collision center because I'm going to be just blatantly honest here. The collision centers, historically speaking, are very inefficient for the most part. And I want to look, kind of throw out a message there for the parts people of how to be the hero of the shop. Now, the first thing that I always kind of recommend when I'm talking to a parts manager is that you got to take control. You got to get control of your parts room because most of the time when I go into a shop, it's a kind of an open door policy. You can kind of come in and take anything that you need at any time, uh, especially as bad when uh, when the parts person goes out for lunch and the and the chemical cabinet gets raided. This is the probably the biggest thing you can do in order to stop the loss of product that doesn't necessarily need to be used but at the same time take more control of the profitability of your parts room. And this leads me into the second thing is starting you don't want to deny your technicians the ability to do their jobs with the products that they need but they do need to be more respectful of the parts room itself in order so you can keep control on it and not overload the the shelves with certain products that tend to grow legs and disappear. So what I would recommend doing is making sure that the hours that you're there you have an open door policy, let me know what you need, what RO are you using this on, and using a program like SIS for example to start charging those products out. So you can use SIS to uh, create invoices for uh, the nuts and bolts and clips and fasteners that were sales, hey that's great. But you can also put in other products like say for example um, you have a, a 3M window urethane and you want to use that 3M window urethane on a car. The technician comes in and it's like, great, what's your RO number? And you can use the SIS to charge that out. It's a billable event. That billable event now gives you the ability to start making a profit or showing a profit with the SIS program. Uh, the other thing you could do too is and then I actually had a shop one time that really kind of opened my eyes to this is that all of those parts, the the uh, leftover hoods and fenders that did not get returned because somebody threw the box away, uh, the headlamp assembly that could go to a car but uh, you know who knows what if it was returned or not. Anyway, all the things that just tend to collect in a collision center. You can use those in the SIS program and create a list for the estimators up front. You can also you know, even get into the parts business yourself. If you have an idea of what you've got, you can prevent that item from being ordered again and you can also start using it. Uh, this shop I'm talking about was down in Alabama and what he did was he actually put all of his these parts and these uh, that were in the parts room and he actually got into the parts business and sold off everything that he didn't need. This was really cool and it brought a huge amount of profit into the shop, cleared out his parts room that he now had space to get stuff done and really took very good control of that of, uh, of that situation. So the SIS is only a part of the of the control issue, but it's that's what it's really boiling down to is, is that you got to get control in order to be successful. Well, I hope this helps. I hope uh, it made some sense, and it's just not the rambling of a computer guy trying to uh, uh, make some uh, 
make some use of his time. But uh, guys, if you need anything, feel free to give me a call at any time. The number is 1-800-864-6561. Appreciate your time. Have a good day. Talk to you soon.